Hey folks, David Stewart here. I hope you guys are having a stupendous day. I know I am. Time for a little bit more publishing news. Now, I covered this on the latest New Pub Talk, but I wanted to make a dedicated video to talk about some of my feelings with it. It is this little story right here. Barnes & Noble publishing classics with race-swapped characters on the book covers. Now, the launch has been canceled not necessarily the books, but I want to dig in to this a little bit deeper and give you some of my opinions on it. So first of all, let's take a look at these glorious covers. So this is point number one. I have four big areas to cover, maybe five. First one is these are not really good covers. These are actually bad covers. I think particularly if you were to look at this Treasure Island cover, this is very cartoonish and flat. It in no way reflects the mood the emotion or the content of this book. And in fact, it makes it look like a picture book for very young children. This is not a book, good book cover in terms of directing the audience towards what they can expect, but it's also a bad book cover just in terms of design. Uh, there's no author on the front uh, that we can see. It's so tiny that we, we can't even see it. It just says Treasure Island. There's a blue sun this use of blue and pink and yellow, it's like a cacophony of colors. Likewise, we have the use of yellow and purple repeatedly in on a bunch of these covers, which makes me think some of these were, were designed by the same person. Yellow and purple is an extremely strong complementary color set. It's one of the strongest, I think, uh, because yellow and purple, as far as how they occur in nature, are not very often together like that. Um, it's pretty rare. There's some flowers that have it, but it really, it just kind of sticks out in your eye, uh, that high contrast. And if you are going to use complementary colors, I like to say that for cover design or just in general, you should maybe offset them slightly. So really strong yellow with really strong purple tends to be an eyesore. Um, it's quite cacophonous to see this um, put in a couple of different places. And in general, if you followed my videos on cover design basics. Most of these don't fit that. Now, trad publishing, traditional publishing tends to ignore a lot of that anyway and kind of go for original looking covers that they hope people will like in a bookstore. Um, so that's that's on them as well. But we have the same thing like green and red are contrasting colors, green and red. Using contrasting colors for a book cover or anything really um, that's that's in this graphic design space is not always the best idea. In fact, usually you you don't want to do it that strong. We also have a really silly cover here with Frankenstein, where um, we've made Frankenstein's monster just black. Now, Frankenstein's monster should not be black or white. He should be like gray. He's made out of dead people. He's disgusting. So taking a disgusting creature and then just painting him so that he looks African ought to be pretty insulting, but also quite ridiculous. Um, this bright green also just cartoonish bright green doesn't really reflect the horror book that is within. Uh, this is a lot of bad cover design. And of course, I would love it, love it if you give me your opinions down below on some of these. Wonderful Wizard of Oz might be the best one because it's the simplest, but at the same time, um, it really has a lot of, of uh, empty space. Again, no author name. Um, anyway, point number two, these are actually public domain works, which means Barnes & Noble, when they publish these, they don't have to pay royalties to anyone. Uh, if they published a new author, a living author, then they'd have to pay them royalties. So this is basically a cash grab. Uh, you get to keep more of the money for the same sale of a book if you don't have to pay royalties to an author. The authors are long dead. These are in the public domain, which means anyone can replicate them. You can get free eBooks. I think of all of these books Right now, you can go to Amazon and there's going to be free ebooks of them as part of the Gutenberg project to upload these old public domain works so people will have free access to them. And that's a good thing. Uh, so this is, it's a cash grab, as you will see. Now, the point number three is that this is virtue signaling. This is a big signal. Hey, um, we care about diversity and we want you to pat us on the back for scrubbing the white characters off of these classic tales and putting black characters on them or, you know, persons of color, POC, uh, which when I when you stop and think about it is not, it kind of reflects this position, which I'll get to in the next point. Um, person of color just means not white. So you're lumping everybody who is not white into one category. It's not very, not very diverse, is it? 
Now, this is one of the rare occasions where I was aligned with aligned with the woke crowd a little bit. So, uh, slapping cartoon POC person of color on books by white folks when the words within those books don't promote anything but the white narrative isn't diversity. Well, that's true. I mean, these are stories about you know white people of the past it was the characters were essentially white diversity is giving poc persons of color equal opportunity to be published in a predominantly white marketplace remember the other week we mentioned it's 75 percent uh women and it's overwhelmingly white so especially in new york the industry is run by liberal white women and this is one of those rare occasions where they also reveal their hand which i'll get to in a second but this is guys correct um giving a black author the opportunity to publish and be promoted would be actually caring about diversity. We'd be taking somebody who's from that underprivileged class and bringing them in and publishing their book and promoting their work and giving them an opportunity to exist in the same space as the liberal white woman. But they're not doing that. Uh, Instead, they are relying on the classics. If they can get you to buy a classic book, which there's Millions of copies of these sitting around in used bookstores get you to buy an extra copy because uh, it happens to have a black character on the cover, then they're going to go for it. And they really did want and expect, I think, people to pat them on the back. Now, here's the other thing about this. It's really rare when you get the lefty crowd to just accidentally show their hand, to reveal what they actually think about people who are not like them. And it's a very... Um, it's not a good look. It's not a good kind of positive opinion because what they're implicitly saying is that people who are not white are not going to buy anything that doesn't have them slapped on the cover that they will not connect with any story which is not about someone who looks like them this is a little bit ridiculous it's a little bit of an infantilizing view of people who are not white is that they can't understand or relate to a story that doesn't have someone with the same color skin of them uh, as them in it Um, which doesn't apply to white people by the way like white people can watch uh, movies that have black actors and not feel like you know i would i don't understand this story because it's not about me as a white person it's about some black person that i have no idea what they think it's like they're human beings and human experiences are, are to a certain extent quite universal you can understand and appreciate stories from other cultures as well so why would somebody who happens to be black not be able to enjoy a story written by a white author about white characters if they're expressing things which are relevant to them putting a if and of course if the story is not at all relevant to them putting a black character on the cover doesn't really make that story magically relevant to them so their real opinion of uh black people is just that they uh they won't read books unless there's a black person on the cover that's a very uh unfortunately racist way of viewing people who are not like you Uh, and it's really rare that they just kind of nakedly show their hand like that on accident but it's a good it's a good time to notice that and the last thing i want to mention is that they actually canceled the launch but not necessarily the books so the launch at um the fifth avenue store has been canceled um to suspend the initiative but that doesn't mean the books are never going to come out. Um, the covers are not a substitute for black voices or writers of color whose work and voices deserve to be heard. So good for them for actually acknowledging some of the complaints. Um, the booksellers who championed this initiative did so convinced it would help drive engagement with these classic titles. Exactly, because they can sell, uh, they can make more money selling classic titles. Uh, and they don't have to pay a black author or anyone else. It was a project inspired by work with schools and was created in part to raise awareness and discussion during Black History Month, which is why we're promoting white authors. Again, if they actually cared about it, then they would promote black authors. Now, I'm going to read this little little statement right here. This project was spearheaded and created by the chief diversity officer at uh, TBWA slash Chiat Day. There should never be a chief diversity officer at your company. If there is, you've got corporate cancer. The Barnes & Noble 5th Avenue location is just the location of the launch. The idea was to call out the fact that these characters were assumed white for no reason based on literary context. Is that true? No, that's actually a lie. These characters are white based on literary context. Just think about Romeo and Juliet. They are explicitly Italian. Okay, These are not Africans. Uh, These are not Africans living in an Italian town. Uh, 
They're Italians. They're named Mercur- Mercutio, as well as Romeo and Juliet. These are not. Um, these are not. This doesn't take place in Africa or something like that. Now there is a Shakespeare play with an African character. That's Othello, but he's also explicitly African. Um, so to think that even in the Renaissance, people were aware of like. You know, Shakespeare was in England writing a story about Italians. That's a different ethnic group, uh, but he set it in that in that specific place for that ethnic group, and it makes sense. And it's based on stories from um, that that area, Italy. And Italians are obviously ethnically different than English people. Uh, so, my whole point here is that they they muffed this. They didn't realize that people would be wise on this and they really just wanted to pat on the back and never really thought that the diverse editions initiative would have pushback from people on their side but this is the nature of it you can't expect somebody to give you a pass just because you're on their side they are going to uh, they're going to come at you i guess that's point number six do not think that just because you're on the left or that you are an ally of the left that you're safe um you are still at risk of being attacked and having some pushback on this. And in my opinion, this pushback was actually deserved. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know your opinion on these covers and what the heck they were thinking trying to promote this and trying to actually do this. Um, So uh, I do want to make a a clarification here that Barnes & Noble is not actually publishing this um they are just going to they were just going to release it it was actually uh, made by as i as i as, as we stated here um it was actually made by uh, tbwa and Chiat day so little clarification there if i said that it was barnes and noble doing it then uh, i apologize that's not correct so thanks so much and i will uh, see you guys next time